He has the earth together. It wasn't Mako. Were... <laughs> Please help me. Thank you for frick's sake. It wasn't Mako. I mean, my, I love Mako, but he's not I mean, going. He was back so to the... sure about it that I had to mislead him. I love him. <laughs> but yes, he was dumb. And he said it on episode seven. About Korra wait, and Asami wait, being wait. together? <laughs> okay, I'm going to, I guess, react to a Your little own. bit to my own video. Okay. Good. Ooh, it's gonna be cool. Little Korra and Asami bonding? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what the frick did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> I called it, and I didn't even know. Now imagine <laughs> me. Uh huh. This was, this was way back in season. I just put that as a as a joke. How many months ago? June 25, 2021, and I called out that they would be together unconsciously. <laughs> I put that as a joke. <laughs> And I judged so hard Asami way back, and she's one of my favorite characters in the whole show. That was the last episode, the season, the <laughs> show finale of The Legend of Korra, The Last Stand. Oh, I love this show so much. I love this episode so much. This season has been such a beautiful journey the whole way through. This is absolutely absolutely my favorite season of Korra. There's no question about it in my mind. It's one of my favorite shows of all time already. I just loved so much, so much, so much about this episode, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. I really want to rewatch this season, mainly because I got so much out of it. And I just want to make sure which is my favorite Avatar verse season. This one or or Avatar The Last Airbender oh season 3. I'm not even kidding. I know Avatar The Last Airbender season 3 is amazing. But this season brought me so much more than I was suspecting. That ending for me was just... Chef's kiss. Perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. It's, it's the perfect end for these characters. And it was a beautiful finale. I love this episode. Like, every finale of Korra is such a banger. It's, they're so good. Probably my favorite one out of all the finales. Probably my favorite out of all of them. I love this. W what do you think about this episode? <laughs> we'll talk about the full season in a... In the spoiler discussion video. Great. Really love the. Um, they brought back the uh, spirit portal. The spirit portal, yes. I love that they created one in the middle of the city and would have never imagined having one of these. In his city. own creation. Exactly. Yes. Like, that place is where everyone can go and live peacefully. He was passionate about it. Like, we didn't see the passion about of, of this project, but you see the love that it's put on the city just because exactly. of the results of right now. The fact that a portal comes in, it's just like the cherry on top of the pie. Yes, it, it's, it, it's bringing the legacy of the Avatar together. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful because this whole thing really makes me appreciate even more the whole aspect of the spirit world. And I love you. Yes! I really love how he was progressing as a character and he was grounded by Mako. The decisions he made at the end were absolutely perfect. And I love the direction that he went with his character, with still making him be the comic relief, but in a way that he was being entirely useful. I love how he decided at the end to have democracy now. It's great. It's perfect. It really is like, this season it really is progression. <laughs> <laughs> progression. I love to see Mako and Bolin fighting together. I was really afraid at one moment, like for a few seconds, that Mako was not gonna make it. I was so like, are they really killing him off? Because they were really emphasizing that moment of him like sacrificing himself. And well, he took a hit there with the with the arm there. I love to see that because Mako at the beginning of the of the show was just like, you know, too much of, of himself, you know. <laughs> but now he's such a good brother and a good friend. And Bolin, of, of course, of course. I want to talk about Varric and Julie. They are, they steal, absolutely, aside of Korra, they absolutely steal this season. 
they are perfect. They bring such a fresh energy to the story, so much joy and even drama and comedy, everything. I love them. I wish I could see, see more of them to be honest, because I felt like, yo, this is the final season, and I just got to really know these two characters, you know? I love the wedding, and it was so cute, and I love to see Varric finally being emotional. Oh, finally! Crying. He was crying! He was <laughs> Even Julie was like, are you crying? <laughs> it was always, like, very cold. Yeah. Like, never opening himself up. Finally, he did. That was so satisfying. <laughs> what I really, really, really loved, absolutely loved about this episode is the whole Korra and Kavira stuff. Gosh, it's not only about, like, defeating the villain, you know? And I really love the outcome of all this. Kavira seeing primary example of someone who is good and really who is willing to help people that have even done the worst like Kavira. I adore that. That speaks volumes about Korra as a character. The most good-hearted person in the whole show. She's willing to help people like that. Not everybody does that. She is the true... She is now finally in her true avatar form. And that is even solidified even more when she is reasoning with Kavira, when she's empathizing with Kavira. I absolutely love that. I want to rewatch that whole scene just to watch the beauty of their like their conversation and Kavira being emotional and being like, like, no, you don't understand me. And Korra being like, I do. I do see a lot of myself in you. And I love that they keep continuing until the very end with this psychological approach to these characters because it's not only about good versus evil. No, it's about finding the humanity in even the worst in the people that have made terrible decisions. I adore that. The definitive trait of a great person, of a hero. Korra brought me this. One of my favorite scenes of the whole show. Adore how much growth there was in Korra. I also wanted to add this, another idea about Kavira that I just thought about while editing this video. And it's this idea about abandonment. With now Kavira's final words in the Last Stand episode, when she is like having this vulnerable emotional moment in front of Korra, we learn that the greatest issue that Kavira is trying to handle right now is actually abandonment. The fact that she's an orphan and more than disappointed at Sue for not taking leadership according to her ideals was feeling like left out, was feeling like Sue abandoned her. This ideal of the kind of modern progress that Kuvira stood out, stood for for so long, you know. And in the mind of Kuvira, that disappointment at Sue's abandonment of those ideals to be taken to the next level, more and more across the season, we see that progress of Kuvira losing herself, like abandoning also sense of hope that she intended to give to the people because she always wanted to do this in for loyalty for the people. Her ambitions really took over her to the point of sacrificing Batar Jr., her love, and the way to reclaim land and reconstruct it was well, destroying an entire city where thousands of lives were at stake. So and in that process, it's also the abandonment of herself. And Korra really relates to that because of, by the end of season 3 and the beginning of season 4, we see that one of Korra's main struggles is to get back at herself. Because it feels like the world has abandoned Korra. And it feels like the identity of Korra has left her soul. It has abandoned her. And Korra does not know where to start in order to find herself. So Korra really relates to Kavira and she links that idea of abandonment to control. That search for self-control. Korra has learned that real power is to stay in control. But not at a physical or territorial level, but at a mental one, a psychological one. Control of your emotions before you let them control you and take over yourself, your real identity. So Kuvira really sees the power of Korra as a leader, as the avatar. And I also wanted to point out the following, because I just realized that this episode has some of the best storyboarding I've seen in the show. The book is about balance, right? And in this episode, the visuals really emphasize that idea when you get to see characters framed 
in pairs. And all these characters, when they share the frame, they represent an idea that has come to be balanced. Koran Kuvira, past self versus present and the search for self-control and how that self-control is the real power. Koran Asami, lonely souls who've suffered severe loss that find deep understanding in each other. Tenzin Kora, master and apprentice, gratefulness for learning and wisdom acquired. Mako and Kora, past relationship, now best friends, it's the leader and the warrior. Mako and King Wu, unlikely friendship, finding admiration one on the other. Lin and Su, broken sisters fighting together until the end. Julie and Varric, inventor and assistant, now lovers and finally admitting they're madly in love. Visually, this episode was just beautiful in that sense. And really, this episode really knocked it out of the park with that idea of balance for me. And it just it just made the episode for me in a whole another level. And I just realized that like now carefully rewatching this this episode. Also, another thing that I loved was the very end. It was it was Korra and Asami together. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. And this season, Korra was being like so intimate and close to, to Asami. I mean, she wrote only that letter only to Asami in Korra alone episode. Yeah. And she blushed in episode 7 in Reunion. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's the perfect ending for these two characters. Especially because these two characters were like kind of destined to be alone but they find happiness happiness in each other they find company in each other they're the perfect fit for each other it it's perfect it <laughs> makes it makes so much sense i can imagine Korra and asami being lgbtqi plus icons for a lot of people actually I, love that. I I I love I love that I love that the cherry in the top really it's a it's it's a beautiful moment and I really wanted to talk more about this whole show and this season as well I'm gonna rewatch the season so much so so much and it brought me everything I and more that I wanted from a story I absolutely love it this show is absolutely underrated I don't know why it's so hated I think it's one of the best shows out there. It's top tier, absolutely, and more people, really, people should check out this show from beginning to end. From beginning to end. And, well, here now comes to an end, this journey, but don't worry, we are going to rewatch Avatar The Last Airbender together, we're gonna react to the whole series from beginning to end. Hope you enjoy this journey and join us back together with the one show that started it all. And that will be it. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more content like this, please give it a like. And you may want to subscribe if you haven't yet. I also do first time watching movies, we watching movies, TV show reactions, and much more. And she has a Twitch channel, Kimimidori2. She makes streams in Spanish, plays video games. She's the best. Make sure to follow her. Link in the description. And thank you so much for everything. Oh my god. You're... Don't take anything serious. Like, woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you in the next one. Bye.